So I just asked her for some more black pepper, that black pepper sauce. Oh man, it's so spicy. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you at 6 a.m. in Kumasi, Ghana. Today we are doing an eight hour super long drive to Mola National Park, the biggest wildlife refuge in the country. On the way, we're gonna stop a few times, maybe see some palm oil, breakfast, lunch. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gonna be forever, man. Yeah, but it's going to be a beautiful drive anyway. From the forest zone to the wooded savanna, you're going to be amazed. Just the scenery along the roadside. It's been, I'd say like a decade since I've done an eight hour drive. Usually I try to max it at four hours, but because of where we are in the country, the only way to get to Mole is to drive from here. If you are in Accra, you can fly it to Male. It's like a one hour flight, and then from there you drive, and it's like two and a half hours, three hours? Two and a half. Two and a half, okay. So let's say three hours. Always think longer because of traffic, right? And yeah, this is Kumasi at 6 a.m. and there's traffic. <laughs> <laughs> After 45 minutes of traffic, we are out of Kumasi, sort of. <laughs> There's still villages coming up here and there, but the like the hardest part to get out of all the traffic was in the main center. So we had to cross from my Airbnb all the way through the center and then to the other side. We left like at 5:45, 5:50, and now it's 6:35. So probably 45 minutes, but we're out. Thank the Lord. But it's still gonna get a lot of traffic. You know, there's only, you know, it's two lanes, that's it. So, it's always like that. And one thing I gotta say though about Kumasi, a lot of dust. A lot of dust, man. It's like, it's like, it almost feels like desert. This contrast, one hour outside of Kumasi is completely different. I mean, the, the level of the temperature. I mean, it was like 84 degrees over there, super hot at six in the morning. And now it's like chilly like whoa getting to the jungle right this is sort of how it is you know when you go to like national parks morning and night always cold during the day boiling scorching and now it's like jungle village a few different farms and that's basically it huh the moment we move from the forest zone to the wooded savanna area the palm trees are not going to be there anymore but then they have the shenard trees so shenard become their major uh, product for uh, processing into various products soap, butter, oil, cream. There's a breakfast, so we're going to have a watch it. Perfect. Watch it. So, right outside of my door is a lady with watch it. So, there is watch it. Watch it is from rice and beans. Then we have some chicken, we have the curry added, and some grapes. And then we have uh, tomato uh, sauce. On top, you have the black pepper. So if you don't like the spicy one, you can just remove the black one aside. This is it, my friends. The watch it. It's so good. Love the rice, spring onions, the lettuce, and you have this delicious, like freaking yummy, a little sweet, a little spicy. Mmm, that sauce. Mm -hmm. This is actually my favorite dish in the country. Big rice bowl. We got some chicken here as well. Mm-hmm. Yummy. The spice, man. Delicious. I like it. It's like um, arroz con frijoles, basically. Mm-hmm. Sticky rice. This is what most of the school kids they eat. Take in the morning before going to school. Right here. Our school kids. And it's more like a sticky rice, right? So it has textures like, I wouldn't say paella or risotto, but it's more dry. It's more like Central American rice and beans. Just cook the rice. When the rice is almost done, uh, no. when the beans is almost done, mm -hmm. then they add the rice. So they cook best the beans. So here in Ghana, you eat a lot of rice and a lot of fufu, which is basically cassava. They also do a lot of corn dough. It's a big mix, right? Corn, cassava, and rice. And this rice is the local rice. All right. Not important. Like, it's freaking phenomenal. Ooh, now it's spicy, huh? <laughs> mm. Yeah, have a nice piece of chicken. You can get chicken? 
We're gonna get fish. Man, Gumasi was hot in comparison to this. Mm. Fried chicken, lightly fried. Still very juicy. Mmm, crispy. Oh wow, that is chicken though. So I just asked her for some more black pepper, that black pepper sauce. Oh man, it's so spicy. It's good, it's delicious. Hey buddy. Mm -hmm. It's like a, more like a pasty black pepper sauce, right? Like pasty. This is a huge rice bowl for breakfast. And each bowl is like five, right? It's like one US dollar? No, five, five, so ten. Mm -hmm. That's $2. Yeah. $2. Nice sounds. Eight in the morning here, on the side of the road, in the middle of Ghana. I don't even know where we are right now in the world. <laughs> Who's there? Can I see the name? Abofo. Abofo. A B O 4. Okay, I'm done. Mm. So spicy. So it's 10 total, two bucks for breakfast. Oh, I am full, I'm ready to go. Awesome, let's go. I'm actually really hot now. That black pepper, ooh, that's spicy. Super spicy. So now we are in the East Bono region, a newly created region, and Techima, where we are now, is the original capital. And this region is also known for the cashew production. So it's like a big town, this place. It's a big town, it's a big town. yeah. So compared to the other villages, I mean, this is big. You have low rises, you have high rises, you have lots of streets, so many more vendors, and obviously traffic and tuk tuk galore. Tuk tuk's everywhere. Whoa. So it's different. I mean, we haven't been to a village like this before. Because most of them are, have been like minuscule, right? Yeah. After 15 minutes, we're out of that town. It wasn't so busy because it's not a market day. But, you know, bus station, mechanics, vendors, not that much to see there, right? Yeah. If you pass through, probably stop for some food. If not, just continue. It's one of the major cashew trading points in... Uh, cashew trading. So we should try some cashews, but I don't see anything on the street. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah? And, uh, one of the farm to taste the fruits. Okay, yeah, I mean, if we could try one, it would be great. I just, the funny thing is, it's not like India. Like, you don't see a million vendors on the street selling that one product. No. It's harder to come by. And what you see in front of us, like that haze, that's a mix between pollution and the dust from the Sahara Desert. So it's not straight pollution, it's not just a smog, right? Uh, Benny, Bush Benny. So all these smogs mixed with the Tahaza, Sahara Desert uh, dust, it creates this um, um, environment. Quick stop guys, we're gonna go see the cashew farm. So these are all cashews, right? All these? Remember, it's a little different here in Ghana. It's not like a cashew farm with a sign where people are like selling stuff and you can go in and visit. No, this is just like on the side of the road, just walk in yeah. and see it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. nature, right? These are the fruits. This one, they are ready to eat. But here, initially, we were just eating the fruit. But for some years now, cashew has become cash crops in uh, Ghanaian economy. And so people are start having the farm. If they don't mind, if you pass through and eat the fruits, just make sure you drop the nuts under the tree so that the farmer can come and uh, collect it. Some of them, they even place ba basket on the farm so you can drop the nut inside. Just drop it right here and then Mmm. Oh, so good. Mmm. Mm. Mine's like, it's almost like sweet and sour. It's sweet and sour. Mm -hmm. So here in Ghana, you're not gonna see people roasting cashews on the side of the road. That's not how it works, right? You can just come here, pull off the crop, leave the cashew right there, and then eat. Again, super moist, sour. Mmm. But it's delicious. Let's go. Wow, I just ate like three of those fruits. So good, cashew fruit. 
Remember, please be respectful. Leave the cashew by the tree. Leave it somewhere they can see it. The stretch of road that we're on now is completely rural. Farmers, farmers, farmers. That is it. I mean, we see a village here and there, but easily 15 to 20 minutes in between villages. So all of this is this, and the temperatures drop. It was 77 Fahrenheit this morning. Now, almost 10 p.m., it is like 87. Really hot. I put my arm out here, and it's cooking. Now we are getting to the drier uh, area. So it's becoming drier and drier. So more bushfire you are going to see along the roadside, unfortunately. So more savanna, right? This is like entering the African savanna up here. So we're going to make a brief stop at the Yang Market here. In Kintampo. Kintampo, that's where we are. Yes. So there's another big town, really big, similar to the one we just passed a little while ago. And Yam Market, where is it? Over here? Yeah. Right off the main street, behind a wall, there's this little neighborhood, and you have all these vendors. They're selling spices, they're selling fish, and here in the very back, we have the yam. Wow, lots of yam, man. Root vegetable. So this whole area is reserved for the yam uh, um, market. Hello. Hey, uh -oh. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Look how big this is. Yeah. Huge. I love it. Right. For me, yam, this. cassava all day. Are we buying some? Uh, three for ten cities. Three for ten cities. But for example, this one, they are a bit bigger, so it's 20 cities. Not so bad, so like for this huge one, it's like four US dollars. But he got a few small ones. Wow, so many. So this whole area is like this, right? All the yam are covered, as you can see over here. They're covered with like, uh, I don't know if that's... Yeah. <laughs> she, she wants her to come back. But I need to show this. So here, look, see all the yam? This is where they cover it, right? So they use bamboo to cover. So guys, sorry, uh, that's not bamboo, that's high grass. It, it resembles bamboo. Oh. Very similar, right? Let's go. We have a very tight schedule because I have to get all the way to the National Park by 3. 3.30 is the last game drive of the day. Obviously, morning game drive, night game drive. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Take care. So this is the best place to buy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Into this lady's too funny. She wanted me to come here and take photos of her. Tomatoes, peppers, small onions. Onions. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have to go. Let's go. Let's go. That was great, man. Oh, cool. Really, really cool. It's funny because for these guys, this is normal. For me, it's like exotic. <laughs> Another quick stop, we're gonna get some roasted yam. So it's cashews, yam, tomatoes, that's what they do in this area. Hey guys. Come here. Come here. Uh, bread. Bread. Ah, uh, what Let bread? Let me see the bread. Ah, uh, and India. India. Ah, uh, bread. Oh! Ah, you It's one CD per piece. One CD per piece? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Bye. 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 Guys. Bye. Oh, the roasted plantains, that's the best. The only problem is we keep making stops like this. We're never gonna get there. We gotta fly, it's already 10 30. Let's go, man. Let's go. You bought bread too? Yeah, for some friends in the Molly National Park. For the baboons, right? <laughs> no, I'm joking. The way you know you're in the savannah is when you see the huge termite mounds. Left and right, hundreds of them. We told me we're gonna see a giant one right now. How big is it? Like five meters? Five yeah, meters tall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. I've seen a few of those in South Africa, Swaziland as well. Any national park you go to that's savannah like this, this type of you know environment, you're gonna have that. So what is the African savanna? Basically, it's an ecosystem of tropical grassland with warm temperatures year-round with the highest seasonal rainfall in the summer. The savanna is characterized by grasses and small dispersed trees. They do not form closed canopies. So basically what that means is that the sun makes it to the ground, right? Because in forests, the sun doesn't get through all the trees. Here it does. So trees here and there, lots of grassland. It's a good snack, right? 
Mm-hmm. Roasted yam. I would add some spice though. Lots of potholes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the name of this river? Black Volta. Black Volta. Black Volta. So after crossing that bridge, we entered a different region of the country. This is the Savannah region. Savannah right? region. Savannah. And it is dry. It is hot, 95 degrees. People are out. And this is mostly more uh, Muslim community, right? Because yes. I see a lot of mosques. Obviously, the, what they're wearing is different too. The main ethnic group here is called Gunja. Okay, so we just made a left. You go this way, Tamale, you go left. We got Muller National Park and we still have about 90 more minutes. It's 100 degrees outside, it's dry, and on the left and the right we have the Shea trees. And we have to take this road to get back. So the day we leave, we're taking this road and we continue all the way to Tamale. So it's three hours from Mole, from the entrance, all the way to Tamale. So again, if you want to come up here and you don't go this way, you fly that from Accra to Tamale one hour and then drive three hours over here. So there is a, a center at Busunu, where the women have been processing the shea nut into uh, butter or oil and cream. But then I'm not too sure if today they will be open. We'll make a stop there to find out. This is Gonja village. It's like a hut village, right? Yeah. It reminds me of, uh, I went to the country of Lesotho, sky capital Africa. This is how it is, all like huts like that. Just like mud huts with the grass on top, right? We made it here to one of the villages where the shea butter is made or where it's extracted, right? From the nut. Okay, okay. The nuts from the shea uh, fruit. So after eating the fruit, or not many are eating, the nuts inside is what they are looking for. They just soak it and now the next process is that they are going to roast it. After roasting, they mill it. After milling, they come back again to roast it, the, 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 the powder or the cracked one, that is what they are, they are doing here. So when they are done with this, they are just going to add water and they will be stirring it. And the fat or the oily part will come on top and they will be collecting it. Then after collecting that, they are going to clean it. The cleaning process also takes time. You know, like they put it in water, take it out, put it in another water, take it out until it becomes uh, perfect. So it's a long process to make shea butter. But in the end, you have this incredible edible butter, plus they use it for cosmetics, right? For the skincare. For the skincare. Yeah. It's cooled. So if they leave it outside, it will become, uh, it will melt and become uh, oil, like cooking oil. Okay, so here we have the final product, the shea butter. Completely done, right? I'm gonna grab a little bit, so to put it on. When it's super dry outside, put this on. Oh, it's very nice. Very nice. Oh man, I feel good. It's oily though. It's oily. So the one we have here, this is like rock solid. Take it outside, it just melts. Obviously you don't wanna do that. Keep it in a solid state just like this. On my head. Oh, this is nice, man. Can we buy some here? Can you buy it or they don't sell it? Uh, actually, I say this one, they are not selling They're it. They're not it's selling it. It belongs to the cooperative. It's a what? So remember, here, they only make the product. They don't sell it. They send it from here down to Accra. So unfortunately, we can't buy any. I really wanted to buy some, but I put enough on that I like moisturize my entire skin for the day. All right, let's get in the car. Still have some time to wait some it. Dam mango. Dam mango. Dam mango. This is the last town? No, not the last town, but the original capital. The original capital of this region? Savannah. Savannah. So we are still having uh, about 26 kilometers to the park. So we're going to stop for lunch? Yeah. I'm excited for this lunch. I'm trying yolof for the first time. Yolof, right? So that's the rice. So the difference is that this rice has been cooked in a stew, right? And then it also has noodles, uh, some red sauce, some cabbage, and some fried chicken. He's having, oh my God, he's having fufu with a light soup. And this is like a local restaurant, open air. In the back is the kitchen. You see them making, you know, porridge, fufu, everything. Mmm. No, it's good. A moist rice with noodles. 
Get a little bit of this. Mm -hmm. This is uh, unique. Most of the places you go to request for jollof rice, you don't see noodles inside. So this is uh, a very unique way also of doing it. So today I've eaten rice for breakfast with the wache. Now rice lunch. Oh, but it's good. Mmm. Marco flavor. This one is cabbage. Nice tang. Not so much. So it's like a spicy tomato paste. And here, fried chicken. Oh yeah. I love fried chicken in this country. It's never like crazy fried. Mmm. It's so good. Really good food. And what does it cost? Like probably like five, right? It's always around one dollar. One or two eight US dollar max. Unless you're having snail. Snail is a delicacy. I spent six dollars on a snail the other day. And it's in my friends. That is lunch. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of it. And I'll see you in two minutes in the car. Mmm. All right, my friends, this journey is almost over. 30 minutes to go, and we're in Mullen National Park. We are about to enter Mullen National Park, the biggest wildlife game reserve in Ghana. It's a must visit if you want to see wildlife in this beautiful country. And yeah, guys, eight hour drive from Kumasi all the way up here. It was a long stretch. We ate some wache, I ate some jollof. We saw uh, shia butter, shia butter. We saw the biggest yam market in Quintampo. Oh, whoa, look at this. Oh my gosh. And here in Mole National Park, there's only two accommodation options. The Mole Motel and the Zena Lodge, a luxurious safari lodge. One of the first ones in West Africa. That's where I'm staying. They have a pool and they have lots of game drive. So game drive in the morning, game drive at night. I'm spending the next 36 hours there, so I'm going on three game drives. I'm excited, guys. I can't wait to see some elephants. What else? Some hyenas. But beware of the baboons. The baboons? Okay, so don't leave your food out. The baboons take everything. Well, guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Mullen National Park. Let's go.